Welcome to MarcusG.TV. Thank you for tuning in. I am Chef Marcus Giuliano, and you can find all about me at ChefOnAMission.com. Today's mission is wine. Uh, one of my favorites. I have a lot of favorite missions. So today's topic is sulfites in wine. A lot of people think they have a sulfite or claim they have a sulfite allergy. And uh, so the first thing people say to me is, I can't drink red wine because of the sulfites, but I can have a glass of white wine, no problem. In reality, white wine has more sulfites than red wine. So what are people actually allergic to? That's a good question. People are actually allergic to the tannins in wine. In most cases, people still do have a sulfite allergy. So let me run down a quick rundown on organic wines and sulfites, and then we'll talk about tannins. First of all, just because a wine is made with organic grapes doesn't mean the whole wine is certified organic. It's very rare to find a whole, the whole process of the winemaking to be certified organic. So what they do in the vineyard, out in the, in the, in the vines, is different than what they do inside the winery. That's a big difference. So they can be organic in the fields and non-organic in the winemaking process. However, you can find USDA certified organic wines and other certified organic wines. Those are on the market. Where everything in the field and inside the winery where they actually press the grapes and ferment and bottle is all done organically. So that's the good news. But those are very, very rare. Now, most people assume that organic wines are sulfite free. They're not in all cases. Um, if it's a certified USDA organic wine from the United States, then by law they cannot add any extra sulfites. So the wine will still contain its own natural sulfites because everything contains sulfites. I mean, strawberries, fish, there's sulfites in a lot of different things. So just it's a natural thing that, that grapes have and that wine making process has is the sulfites. So now the neat thing is some of these wineries are now making wines with no detectable sulfites. So what they do is they test the wine while it's in the vats still or in the barrels or aging, and if it reaches less than one part per million of naturally occurring sulfites, then they put it into a bottle. And we have several of those here, um, which customers absolutely love, and I, I love them too. Uh, uh, Frey Vineyards makes some incredible uh, Petit Syrah, Zinfandel, um, Cabernet, which I'm really, really impressed with. So a quick recap. Because a grape is organic in the field doesn't mean the wine's organic. Because the wine's organic doesn't mean there's free of sulfites. You have to actually have to look for a label that says no detectable sulfites. Um, a lot of wines out there say no added sulfites, so there you go. So what are people really allergic to if white wines have more sulfites than red wines and people think I'm avoiding a red wine because of the sulfite load? Well, there's something in red wines that are called tannins. Tannins are, are what give the wine its structure, it's big, it's bold, it's assertiveness, and it helps the wine age, okay? So what I tell most people to do if, they, if, if they're in this scenario is, I say go buy some dried apricots. You know those dried apricots, the really bright ones? The apricots we use here at Aroma Time are actually very dull and brown colored, and people look at them like, those aren't apricots. Well, they are apricots. They just don't have any added sulfites, because sulfites are a preservative. And that's why sulfites are in wine, because it's a preservative. So those really bright apricots and a lot of other things like cranberries, dried cranberries that are bright color, any fruit that's a, any dried fruit that is a bright color usually has been added, their sulfites have usually been added to it. Now the load on sulfites in apricots is like 2,000 parts per million. It's really way up there. It's, I'm not sure if that's the exact, but it's astronomical compared to wine. So I tell people, go eat some dried fruits. If you're having the same reaction that you're having with the wine, then there's a sulfite correlation there, okay? But if you're not having that sulfite reaction, then it's like, okay, well, you can't just be allergic to sulfites in wine and not sulfites in fruit. So chances are there's a tannin allergy. Now, tannin allergy is much more difficult than sulfites because there's a lot of wines you can buy that are just sulfite free, or you can drink sake. A lot of people drink cocktails um, that have no sulfites. But once you start working with tannins, it gets so tricky because they're really, every wine is different. And here's the, here's the really weird part. Every wine, year after year, can be different. So if you love a Syrah from California from, from XYZ Vineyards, and then you drink a 2007 that's, that treats you fine, all of a sudden the 2008 vintage comes out and you start drinking that, there could be a different tan load in the 2008 versus the 2007, totally different. And now, here's the neat thing. 
If you buy that wine and age it, the tannins will dissipate with age. So the older wines that have more structure, that have more boldness and service, that have more tannins, that have the ability to age, those tannins will actually decrease over time. So if you're a wine lover like me and you're drinking, you know, mid-90s Cabernets from California, those tannins have reduced significantly since it was first bottled. So if you like the wine two, three, if you couldn't handle a wine two, three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, that wine right now might treat you perfectly fine for tannins. It also makes a difference what time of the day the grapes are picked. Some wineries, you know, really focus on night harvest, some focus in the morning, during the day. It, all that changes, so really tannins are really a hard thing. My advice is if you, if you find a wine that you can actually handle the tannin load, stick with that wine, especially if you're out and about. Don't experiment. You know, it's really tough to, to start experimenting when you're at a restaurant or, you know, when you're at a friend's house. If, if there's a certain winery, a certain uh, wine from a winery that, that, that treats you well, stick to that and just stay with that. You know, you might want to experiment because you might want to taste other things. But typically, you know, it's a tough thing. Tan tannins are a really tough thing in wines. Just to recap, go grab some apricots. Do the apricot test, the bright apricot test. See if it's sulfites versus tannins. Um, wines have both tannins and sulfites. So when people say, well, I can drink a white and not a red because the sulfites, they're actually saying, I can drink a white because a white has no tannins versus the red who has more, much more tannins and structures and assertiveness. So that's really what that is. I hope this video helped you. Every time I talk to the people about this, they're just so amazed and they come back to me like, you were right. It was never sulfites being with it. It's tannins. It's the tannins that are doing that. I was wondering why certain red wines, because a lot of people say to me, well, I can drink a certain red wine, but I can't drink other wines, but really red wine because of the sulfites. Typically, it's, they mean the tannins. They just don't understand that. So either way, a sulfite allergy and a tannin allergy are, can be pretty serious and, and can really mess you up. So just actually proceed with caution and, uh, you know, and take this advice and experiment if you want to. But of course, I'm not giving any medical advice here. I'm just giving advice based upon my own personal experience and what I've noticed and, and, uh, and things that, I, that I've observed in, in the 20 years in, in this business. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like, subscribe, share, and uh, leave a comment. Thank you very much.